What's going on guys, welcome back to the series special effects for games. This is the tutorial number 18 and we are going to see how to create a tornado like this one. And as you can see it is composed of two main parts, which is the tornado itself and the trail of smoke that the tornado leaves behind. So let's see how we can do this. And as you may have noticed, we need a couple of sprites. In fact, we need two sprites only, the swirl and the dirt. So let's create a new Photoshop file with 500 by 500 pixels, or bigger if you want. And we are going to paint the background to black and create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N. Now let's select the Lips tool and we can create a perfect circle by holding Alt and Shift at the same time right about this size. Now let's go ahead and select the brush and what we want to do is choose a brush that we like, one that will look good for the tornado. And I find out that this brush is good for what I want and now we can select the pen tool and with right click we can choose stroke path and in tool we are going to select the brush and turn on simulate pressure. And as soon as you press OK, what we will see is the brush being applied to our circle. And this is fine, let's duplicate the layer 1 and rotate it with Ctrl T just a little bit and move it up. Now what we can do is duplicate again, it's just a simple way to give some more brightness, just like this and then we can press two times in this layer to access the layer style and we can turn on outer glow. Let's change the color to a white and don't worry about the color for now, we can manipulate it in Unity. And we can also increase the spread. Now we can press OK and this sprite is done, let's just hide the black background and save it as a PNG to Unity. Now once we are in Unity, we can create a new folder, rename it to Tornado, import the swell that we have designed and create a new material with the same name as the texture. Now let's change the shader to Particles Additive or Mobile Particles Additive and we can drag and drop our swirl to the texture slot. Now let's create a particle system and rename it to Tornado and we can go ahead and drag and drop our material to our particle system. Now the first thing we want to do is to set the start speed to zero because we are going to make it go up in another way. Let's also change in the render the render alignment to world and set the max particle size to 3 at least, so it doesn't shrink when you get closer. Now as you can see the textures are rotated in the wrong direction and we can fix that by turning on 3D start rotation. Let's select random between two constants which will allow us to make sure that the particles have a random rotation between 80 and 120 in the x-axis. This way we create some randomness and they are facing the right direction. Let's also set the start lifetime to be random between 1.5 and 2. Ok, and now we go to the shape and make a very small radius for our cone. And now let's control the size of our particles by going to the start size. And in my case I'm going to make it random between 4 and 5. But this is always up to you and to your project. Now, the way we are going to make it go up in the Y axis is by turning on velocity over lifetime. And we want to change to world so the Y of the velocity over lifetime is the same as our pivot. And let's make the Y random between 3 and 1. This is also where you control how tall your tornado is going to be. Now, in the size of a lifetime, it's very important that we have a curve similar to this one, because this is where we are going to create the cone shape that normally a tornado has. Maybe in the beginning it has already some size, like this, and now we need to turn on color of a lifetime, which will make sure that the particles fade in and fade out smoothly. And if you don't know, the keys on top control the opacity and the keys at the bottom control the color. And I'm gonna create one key at the bottom, a little bit blue. Now let's go ahead and increase the rate over time of our emission to at least 100. Ok, so the core of our tornado is done, we only need to turn on rotation over lifetime 
and make sure it's random between 180 and 360. Yeah, just like this. For the next part, we can duplicate this particle system, rename it to Tornado Mid or something similar, and go ahead and duplicate our material, which is going to be called Alpha Blended, and switch the shader to Particles Alpha Blended. Now we can drag and drop this material to the Tornado Mid, and we start to see some difference. And we do this because this will allow us to create some darker colors. And that's what we are going to do to our Tornado Meat. I'm going to choose a darker grey and a darker blue. After we have changed the colors, we want to say that the start lifetime is going to be a little bit bigger, between 2 and 3, and the start size is also is going to be a little bit smaller. And now, if we go to velocity over lifetime, we want this particle system to only reach around the mid of our tornado. So we are going to decrease the maximum y to around 1 and 0 0.3. Now let's increase the emission to around 150 and that's it for this particle system. We are starting to see that darker tone in the base and now we can go ahead and duplicate this particle system and rename it to Tornado Low. And this particle system is going to be quite bigger compared to the others. We are going to use it to get that diffused, darker tone around our tornado, but only in the base. The main difference is that we are going to create another texture. So let's go back to Photoshop or to your image editing software. And let's create a new file, rename it Dirt. Let's again paint the background to black. Create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N. And this time, with brush selected, we are going to choose this brush right here. With an opacity of around 70, we start creating these points around, like this. The next brush that I use it is this one to create some, some bigger points, some bigger circles. And finally, I choose another brush, like this one, to create the big cloud of dirt that this texture is going to have. After creating some bright spots like this, we can hide the black background and save as a PNG to Unity. Once you are in Unity, we can duplicate the Swirl Alpha Blended and rename it Dirt Alpha Blended. We can drag and drop our texture to the texture slot and drag the material to the Tornado Low, this diffused cloud in the base of our tornado. I'm just going to lower a little bit the opacity of the main colors and maybe even increase more the start size. We can also decrease the emission to around 100 and increase the radius of our cone. Let's also make sure that the velocity of a lifetime is lower than the other particle system. And now there is just a tiny detail missing which are some particles. Just some small particles. And for that we can create a new particle system, rename it to Particles. Let's decrease the start lifetime to around 0 0.8 and 2.5. And set the start speed to be random between 1 and 3. The particles are going to be very small, so the start size can be around 0 0.05 and 0 0.25. And I'm gonna make it random between two colors. Decrease a little bit the alpha, and the second color is just a dark blue, like this. And now we want to increase the radius of our cone, as well as the angle. To create some randomness, we can turn on velocity of a lifetime, change to world, and set random values between 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 for the x and the z axis, just like this. We can also fade in and fade out the particles with color of a lifetime. And now a small trick is to use noise with the random strand between 0.1 and 0.8 with a frequency of 1. And this will make sure that the particles move in a curvy way. Ok, this is starting to look great. Now the only thing which is missing is the trail of smoke that the tornado is going to leave behind. And for that we can create a new particle system. Rename it to Trails Smaller or Similar. Now we can duplicate the Dirt Alpha Blended material and rename it to 
Dirt Additive and change the shader to Particles Additive as well. Now let's drag and drop to the trail smaller and we want to change the start speed to very small values like 0 0.2 and 1 and the start lifetime is also going to be really small between 1.2 and 1.8 by the way the start lifetime is where you control the time the trail will leave in this case now let's set the start size to be random between 0 0.5 and 2 more or less and the start rotation is going to be random between 0 and 360 degree and we want to randomize rotation so we set it to 1 let's change the colors to a white with half of the alpha and a darker blue with a lower alpha as well the emission in this case is where we control the thickness of our trail and I'm going to set to 30 for now and we are going to see what happened in the shape we can decrease the radius of the shape but we want to increase a lot the angle of our cone to something similar to this after we have done that we can fade in and fade out the trail with color of a lifetime we also want to turn on size of a lifetime and choose a curve similar to this one and we can also turn on rotation of a lifetime and set the angular velocity to be random between 90 and minus 180 now if I select the tornado and move it around as you can see we have no trails left behind and that's because in the trail smaller we have to change the simulation space to world and now if you move around the tornado we can see a trail of smoke left behind which is great ok and that's pretty much it for this trail and we want to duplicate it and rename it to trail bigger and for this one we are going to use the dirt alpha blended because we want some darker colors and I'm going to change the white to a darker grey and keep the blue but decrease the alpha and this one is going to have a bigger start lifetime around 3 and the start size is also going to be a little bit bigger between 1.2 and 2.5 we can also make the shape bigger and that's pretty much it now if we move around we can see some nice and cool smoke left behind but if you look closely we can see some flickering between the trail smaller and the bigger trail and this happens because we have two shaders basically overlapped and we can fix that by by selecting the trail bigger and down here in the shader where it says render queue we can decrease it to 2900 and now we solve the problem of the flickering and our tornado is done I hope you have enjoyed guys and this is it for this tutorial if you want to find more tutorials about game effects you can go to my channel or you can find them in the description so please stay tuned for more and in case you have enjoyed please support me on my patreon page i will appreciate a lot if you do so and i'm really thankful to all my patrons just wanted to let you know guys that you are amazing thanks a lot for the support and i hope to see you in the next tutorial